apart from teaching there are, are there many any hobbies of yours that people want to know yeah, that's a good question yeah thank you 3 2 1 here we go ladies and gentlemen welcome to this very special edition of our podcast today we have a distinct pleasure to uh, of sitting down with the captain of our academic ship and the driving force behind our institution success our principal dr bhavish patel join us as we unravel the story and insights of this exceptional leader and the world of education thank you for being here with us thank you before we start our podcast i just want to ask you uh, if you can share some insights about our recent development of our institution the mahavir education trust has established the institution in 1985 okay with a motivation to give a quality education in technical field specifically the recent development is the we have started two new courses which are focusing in the latest technology which is required for our country that is vlsi and one more course is in related to 5g that is advanced communication system and we are also invited to start the part time uh, courses that is for working professional so these are the latest things happening to not only build the career of student but to build the society and our country which will help in overall development across the globe that's very good sir so sir before entering to the development of us uh, of our institution i just want to ask you if you can share your background and journey to become the principal of this institution and your early background yeah i have done my engineering in computer science and engineering okay. uh, way back in 1988 i took admission and passed out in 1992 from one of the renowned institution in uh, state of karnataka that was a time when the people used to get scared of taking admission in the computer because the computer science has just begun in india around 1984 and i took admission in 1988 Okay. and the post graduation i have done from vjti i have taught there as a visiting for the pg students and then the phd from amravati university in maharashtra uh, worked as a lecturer and then slowly progressed to the principal of shine and kakachi polytechnic and then in 2014 i worked as a director of the engineering college uh, and the campus director and in 2016 i took over the charge as a principal of shyanga kachi engineering completely that's just a very great background of you sir but what motivated you in the year where everyone was afraid of taking engineering courses uh i have the intuition a strong intuition by the grace of god okay and uh, when the people it is said that when there is a fire don't go where the mob goes so the mob was running towards the uh, civil engineering and the basic engineering courses and i thought that uh, uh, engineering in computers is entirely different and where uh, i could foresee that uh, this automation will help the country to grow in a by and large scale because i used to listen to the speeches of uh, the prime minister then uh, Rajiv Gandhi was a prime minister at that time and he brought in so many technological changes and computers were uh, one of that and i was very much impressed by the way the computer field was growing and that uh, inspired me that i must do something in computer okay. so being from the engineering background having a passion for engineering what do you feel the most rewarding thing about being the principal of this institution the most rewarding is a job satisfaction because i look forward as overall uh, not only in academic development of the student uh, students can learn academic because when you compare after pandemic the learning has become very simple okay. the students can do even online learning now the getting knowledge is now very easy you, we have a internet youtube and so many other social medias and the online portals which give you certificate but we as a principal i feel that student it is not should not get only the bookish knowledge but they should also get a practical knowledge so we have developed the model and the system which gives us the inner satisfaction that students are not only learning the bookish knowledge but they are 
getting some experiential knowledge by going on to the field, doing internship, working in the live projects, uh, working in the corporates and they are future ready, the, the stud our students are the day one employable. Okay. So, what are the key responsibilities of a college principal as a student, I want to know that. As a principal, I coordinate with a lot of government bodies, lot of authorities. The main is the management of the whole institution, not only it involves the finance, but also the human resource as a teacher's ability, the quality the quality of teachers and quality of teaching and the outcome is, should be the satisfaction of the student because every student has some dream uh, when they take admission that I will be at this place, I will be at that place when uh, after four years when I come out of the engineering and that matching the desire becoming the deserve is something that is a real challenge for a principal that I look and uh, the students expectations to meet is one of the things that the, as a principal I must take care and see that the deserve meets desire. So any great experience while you were the principal of this college regarding to the campus or the institution or the faculty? When uh, we uh, started one scheme, insurance scheme for the students. Okay. Uh, basically, it covers education. For parents, it was uh, some kind of different policy that we had thought and after rigorous discussion, uh, we got approval from management and other stuff from the students at parent. At that time, there were people who were thinking that how this policy will help. Uh, it is just 700, 800 rupees at that time. And then uh, I came across one student who was... Uh, taken admission in first year and uh, her father suddenly expired oh, due to understand. some reason. And at that time, uh, this policy had, and that was a first claim under that policy, that child was uh, coming from a poor financial background and I would have not come across, but uh, that girl was writing some application in some notes and that came in my notice that her father is not there and uh, she is from a very poor family background and they really need financial aid otherwise the education must have been stopped. Oh. Now at that time we claimed this uh, from the policy her all three years fees, rest of the three year fees were paid from this policy and uh, then the education continued and uh, now uh, this uh, candidate or girl, she is working in one of the top national company at a very good position in the field of computer engineering. So this was something different that we tried and it succeeded and ours was the first college to implement such policy which relates with the earning member of the family. It is not only parent but it is an earning member of the family. So they, then after that she had come and visited and praised that this policy has helped and it has set an example for others to follow. That's very great. So, since you have joined the college till now, what do you think are the major major changes which has, which has happened under your guidance? So, there are a series of changes. We will not talk only about the intake which has been raised in uh, number of students getting admitted in every year by the uh, approval authorities that have permitted us to uh, admit the more number of students. The year I joined uh, in 2016 completely I took over as a principal from there we had only four UG programs and currently we are running with the eight UG programs, three PG programs and one PhD program that has been added recently in uh, information technology and one more soon we are going to add. The recently we are also starting the program on uh, for a working professional that will be part time or flexible timing. For all those who do not get admission after diploma and they start working because of various reasons uh, and they want to continue now from the industry, then they can do under this flexible timing mode. The, we will be running these two programs in one in computer engineering and information technology. So and the major phase shift is like the quality of education which we were providing. 
the new model that we have developed about the internship. There is a research cell who does uh, takes up some research problems and then sort it out, then technology transfer happens. We have tied up with lot many MOUs where students are taking uh, benefit of development of so many things. It is not only development of the website or app, but they uh, get into the strengthening of uh, whatever problems are provided by industry and uh, giving solution to them resulting into uh, more than 300 copyrights on the name of students and uh, several patterns, several startups. So, it is a big phase shift that we have brought in like from the black and white, uh, black and white uh, television to now full 4K HD television kind of change. That is very great sir. So, as a student, I wanted to know about your patents and your PhD degree holding. My uh, PhD is anywhere in the area of secured uh, multimedia retrieval using data mining. Uh, can you elaborate? It is a secured uh, retrieval. So, whenever it is like uh, nowadays you see on Google that you can find some image based on the image. Okay. The my work relates to that it uh, includes a multimedia. So, it is basically text, image, audio and video retrieval. So, in terms of text it is a simple search what we do using Google. On terms of the image we can input say our photograph or any individual photograph and we can find that person's image or individual image or whatever image we have given input. It will search the similar images. It will in addition it will search similar images in videos if you have. If you input a small clip of video it will get you the where you have the full fledged video or where the clip is of that part and if you have an audio clip then this audio clip can be an input and it will get to it will retrieve securely where this audio is being placed in video or maybe similar audio audio clips can be retrieved this all happens on the secure side okay so the now now in our college Delhi many students who have won patents who have won prizes who have won competition uh, the recent example is the Intel team who has won thousand dollars for each student. So, what are your feeling that students are getting this uh, patents, they are getting these projects. So, what is your feeling and how are you encouraging these projects? This initially when we will start uh, after second year, uh, this all activities, there are various cells, professional bodies. All together we have 35, uh, more than 35 uh, cells and professional bodies who take care of uh, various uh, events as well as various activities in a college. So, whenever any uh, corporate connects to us or we get any information about any such technical events, then we pass on to the student, there are some screening teams, there are some uh, preparations are done. We also encourage uh, the participation uh, at a very large level in all these international and national competition. Then uh, the selected students are uh, provided with these opportunities and they are also trained if required. Okay. So, as a principal, how do you feel about it that our students are winning these competitions or getting these patents for us? It is really a great pleasure and we have the proud that the students who are given the ample opportunity to explore whatever quality they have. So, it is a matter of extreme pleasure that students are participating and uh, winning into various competition, depicting that whatever way we have planned or whatever we are doing, it gives a different level of satisfaction that what we have done. Always we in India, we try to boast ourselves, but not boasting ourselves, but the when it is uh, the achievement by student is appreciated by international bodies or national bodies outside the college, then we really proud in saying that whatever path we have selected is really correct and we are on a right path and we should continue something doing the similar thing in future. So, as the Mumbai, as we live in Mumbai, there are many colleges, but they do not have the recognition like in the US or in the Ireland or in the Germany, that education system is different. So, do you think we are somewhere lacking behind or do you think it is the major syllabus of our it was lagging, but now with the national education policy 2020, it has brought lot of reforms okay. like uh, online courses. But anyway, we were doing this from long time. 
uh, internship has been brought in as a part of NAP. The, this was also we initiated in last four years back. Internship uh, almost I think to the range of 90,000 per month has been uh, given to the some students and uh, few students have got the PPO also after internship. So there is a lot of change, vibrant change, positive change is happening in field of the technical education also. Uh, some courses like yoga, music and all that will be added in the very near future. So we will be now, I do not find that there will be any major gap between the foreign institution education policy and our policy. In fact, we will be moving much ahead than that in a very short span. So in the recent years, India has grown exponentially in the terms of GDP, in the terms of knowledge, in the terms of entertainment. In the terms of many things, uh, India has been rig- ranking up. So, where do you think the education is going to be in next 10 years? Or in general, Sakek is going to be in 10 years? In 10 years down the line, I feel that we will be the institute, institution who will be awarding our own degree. Okay. And we will have the courses of that interest that now our students are going abroad, but the people from abroad will come here to learn. It may not be only engineering, we will be adding some different flavors in which the students will not have any courses in uh, very nearby institution and the quality of education will be the topmost so that the students who join the course, they will get the job immediately if they desire so or will be in a position to guide them if they want to do some startup. And they, the students coming out from our institution in 10 years, they should be job givers and not seekers. So, this is a very personal question at the earliest stage of my podcasting career that how do you feel that Sakek is promoting all the creators and ourselves to uh, make this kind of podcast? See, uh, as I told, we are we encourage and explore all the qualities that student has got. So, this is podcast is something different initiative that we are attempting now. And this podcast will help the student. As I told, it is, NEP has brought a lot of changes. And the part of NEP is not only the technical education, only. As I told, it, it includes also music and the yoga. It also includes the film production. So, and the, the social uh, impact. So, this is going to be the social impact kind of, which the students who are not uh, able to understand or learn something in their institution, we will be soon starting some series which will have even technical talks and other things which are under experimentation. So once that experimentation is completed, we will be uh, launching that particular technical uh, events also online. So then <clears throat> the students who are striving to get the information will be able to join through this channel uh, either on um, uh, YouTube our channel or any other channels of our college and they can get information on this. So, podcast will play a very big vital role because this is something different where that nobody has tried and we are launching it for the first time in uh, the educational institutions. Yeah. So, uh, being as a student, podcasting was my dream for many guests with the first guest with uh, you sir and there are many in line for their podcast. What are your suggestions to me and my team so we can benefit it properly? The podcasts, uh, the dignitaries you get in should have some uh, the basic requirement of them will be the best is the leadership quality. They should have ethics and they should able to motivate and show students the path that where they should go. For example, if somebody decides to have a career in computer engineering or maybe uh, motivational speaker, then he should able to see that spark and the speaker should able to show that how you will achieve your goal in the future. Okay. So, if you through your podcast, if this thing happens, then you don't need to strive to get the listener or the follower. It will come on your own. It will come on its own and I wish that your podcast, uh, podcast should get uh, the minimum, the millions of followers in a short span. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, any upcoming projects or upcoming milestones uh, Sakek is going to achieve or Sakek is going to present in the further event. So, can I can we get a glimpse from your side? 
Yeah, now uh, we are uh, we have started the construction of the new building, which will be more than one lakh square feet, and there we have the short term and long term plan already developed to adopt some courses which will have uh, different flavor. Okay. And uh, that courses activity is already fi you know finalization stage, where uh, we are also in talks with some top notch industries that. Uh, we will be running the courses with them in association with them. Some workshops will happen. Already, it is happening that industry people are coming and conducting some workshops. So, uh, this kind of courses, which will be really in need of industry, will be doing as we are providing some facilities here also in this building also. Some courses which really industry needs. We are training students by industry for student, and these are all facilities are given free of cost. So this will be the extension activity of what we are doing, but it may not be limited only to engineering. There are, uh, we are also considering non-engineering things like maybe uh, the programs of BSc, which will be of four years, where one year will be internship in company mandatory. Okay. So the recent topic in the student faculty is that there are many issues with the student for regarding to the mental health or ADHD. So, why, what do you think Sakek could help or uh, instead of Sakek, any institution can help their students in the field of uh, mental health and ADHD? So, first thing begins with uh, admission that there is a lot of stress during the admission. And uh, this stress go on accumulating unless they know how to manage the stress. The first and foremost because the students come after 11th and 12th. And their education system is little different than engineering because engineering requires real hard work, physical and mental also. So they must learn during the first year how to manage the time. That is a time management, stress management and activity management. If they become regular in doing the activities, whatever have been given by college, the stress does not come at all. If there are any issues, see, nobody can in today's time, nobody can be away from stress. So, we have a counsellor full time who takes care of this activity. We are also conducting the sessions on time management and the stress management and in addition how to manage the time during examination. Because most of the student because of pandemic the things have changed a lot, the cycles have changed and these are all post pandemic effect what we see. That is a post COVID-19 effects that is now visible and it will be still continued in a more severely. So we have already taken a step that during COVID time also we had conducted online sessions by the counsellor. If required, counsellor even counsels the parents free of cost and the sessions continues. Some students understand that they require this counselling facilities and they go and approach counsellor. Otherwise, we have the mentoring system where there is a regular between, between the mentor and the mentees. And the teacher that mentor uh, identifies who needs such kind of counseling because every time student may not able to identify that they are under stress or they want counseling. It is not career counseling. Career counseling is done by mentors, but this counseling helps in reduction of stress and then teacher themselves, the mentor themselves forward the students to counselor and then counselor does their job because this Counseling is purely confidential and when required only it is shared with the parents if required. Otherwise it is between only counselor and student and the whatever result we have uh, seen is really encouraging because the students have come out from the stress of different area of stress. It is not only the stress of study, sometimes the family stress also. Then if required the counselor counsels the parent also they are called and informed about how to handle the situation between the relationship stress okay. and that has helped a uh, lot many students in fact. So uh, as you can see uh, after 2016 the India's entrepreneurial side has uh, raised just quickly as anything else. So Indian startups have become uh, a unicorn, decacons and they are getting millions or uh, not even millions, billions of dollars of funding. So every student is also having an entrepreneurial side. So how do you think you can encourage them? We have entrepreneurship cell who looks into this all aspects. We are extending whatever help is needed by enter, uh, entrepreneurship cell. Recently, 
last academic year we had arranged one shark tank, shark, mini shark tank kind of activity where uh, from national, uh, from the, our country there were uh, many entries which were shortlisted and among the few uh, pitches happened and I am uh, happy to share that around 25 percent of the participants got the uh, funding from that. Uh, and uh, in that one of the participants was from our student also. That's very good. Uh, so this kind of activities are regular. We encourage them uh, with this, uh, the meetings with the sponsor, this funding agencies. We also have established the uh, incubation cell, which takes care of if anybody wants to do startup or any other ideas are required like marketing or pitching or maybe legal aspect or establishing, then we have advisory board compromising of CAs and legal and all that stuff. So they guide on patent also. Uh, with that cell, three patents are filed by student, two patents are awarded, one out of that one is an international patent uh, is awarded uh, for one of the faculties. So the questions, the question I had is, uh, many of the Indian startups are getting the foreign funding. What's your take on it? So, Indian startups should take the foreign funding or they should go uh, via the self-funding or government-aided funds? So, it depends on the, uh, the people who come together for startup and what are the area of operation. Now, government of India has some reason and they have limited that you can receive the fund from this particular countries only. So, if it is coming from that country, it is well and good because ultimately it uh, contributes the growth of the founders as well as growth of the country. So there is no harm in if it, it contributes to the development of everybody. Okay. So in this competitive education sector in India, there are many reputed colleges in India, so in Mumbai as well as in Maharashtra. So how is Sake going to differentiate from all these colleges and the, as we can say it, the right word competitors who be the future leader in education? See, our belief is only to deliver the best quality education and with the integration of novel, innovative uh, teaching learning methodology that we have adopted, internship model which is working very good and then once we get autonomy, uh, with autonomy we have plans that students should spend minimum one year into industry. Okay. With this one year with education in industry, they will earn also something and they will learn also. And once they one, walk for one year into industry, I am sure that that industry will, is not going to leave them after one year. And this is something unique model which we have already developed. And uh, we are testing it now and the results are uh, really very good. So this, with this model, I think uh, we will able to, in fact others will, have, will be left far behind and we will be probably much more ahead in a race because we believe in very well planned and execution. So as a principal of this reputed institution, how do you feel this institution is uh, differentiating from other institutions uh, currently are there? Currently whatever other institutes are doing, <coughs> the uh, whatever nearby institute or in India, what we have seen the, with the affiliated institutions, they have a limited uh, scope in curriculum. So what we, differentiately what we are doing is we are inviting industry people to deliver not only talks but whatever they need. I will give you one example in computer. We had uh, recently HR meets where the, uh, we invited uh, the HRs of the uh, corporate where our students are being employed and in addition where they are not employed. So we wanted to understand in overall that what is happening in industry where our students are how they are performing after recruitment or if the companies which are not recruiting, why they are not recruiting. And there was a one suggestion, uh, there were a lot of suggestions which we are implementing now. One of the suggestions was that the computer uh, company from which was represented by that particular HR was something that they need the people who have the basic knowledge in uh, MongoDB. This is one of the examples. Now then we realize mm -hmm. that MongoDB is something which is going to come up or it is coming up and people are now currently using in industry. 
So we called industry expert who is working in MongoDB area. He thought the 60 student batch, although it was a limited, we paid to the trainer and students were trained free of cost and now few of them have got a very good job opportunity and uh, internship opportunities also. So this model works uh, very well. Okay. So as you can see, uh, I asked you a question, a uh, few questions back that Sakek in 10 years. So how do you think Indian education is going to be in 10 years as per you are a principal of a very reputed institute? See, Indian education system in today's time is going to, it is going through a big change with NEP. It is going with the face lifting kind of 360 degree change where it will be not only the theoretical way. It will have a more emphasis on learning and development of the skill. So skill is the future. Unless the one doesn't have a skill, they will be out. Second is the up continuous updation, which is a must that our faculties are doing and students are also doing. The faculties are already undergone the uh, different changes or updation as we started new courses in cyber security, AI data science, the electronics engineering has been changed to electronics and uh, computer science, computer science. So as the world changes, we will have to change in a rapid way. So the change and change with the skill is the future unless we do that. So after 10 years, the skill is going to be in demand like anything which we cannot imagine. Like one of the example is a EV, what we are talking now, the EVs will, uh, the people who will learn about the batteries and other requirements of the uh, electronic vehicle is going to be in tremendous demand. So we have to understand what skills are going to be required and accordingly we will have to fine tune the curriculum and this workshop basically help in development of student skills. So with that 10 years down the line, the skill development will have the major role in development of our country. So any three major changes or dreams you have regarding this college that you have to change this or you have to implement a new idea? See one of the ideas I want to see is few courses which we award degrees should be run purely by industry so that the industry institution gap should be minimized. Okay. The students who take admission here should not have been thought of any other institution and when they move out their dream should be fulfilled. Okay. And the, I want to see when the students are across the country, the alumni should contribute in development of the institution where we have lot of uh, alumni chapters not only in India but outside India also. Okay. So anything any qualities you think have made you a, such a very charismatic and successful college leader? Uh, I believe in taking quick decisions okay. and a right decision. So that and uh, I feel that I am a good administrator also. So the end, the, on the top of that, the ethics is something and the disciplinary life. That, that has contributed in uh, my personal growth and development. So apart from teaching, there <coughs> are there many, any hobbies of yours that people want to know? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> I do uh, read a lot, but uh, not novels and all, so you will not get any author's name. <laughs> No. <clears throat> I read very down different topics. Okay. Uh, reading is my hobby and uh, I do regular meditation. Okay. So, so that I, helps. So as I see you are a very techno savvy person. So how is how is your approach regarding to the tech? So technology can be used in both the ways because it is a, like a sword in two sides. So we use technology for the development and knowledge gaining. I always encourage everyone that is student as well as the faculties also to make use of whatever is available. If something has to be developed, look at first what is available, use that and then enhance that with something different that nobody has thought of. So we, the use of technology in a true sense will happen when 
the existing technology has been used with some integration with something different differently which nobody has considered even or thought of and then we can make right use in development of technology so anything you want to make memorable about the college the student life should be memorable throughout okay the campus and uh, as of the alumni who are coming they have a very good memory so i wish that uh, the students when they spend 4 years and the major life span of that in learning whatever is a learned they have so far 12 years but major line in learning happens in this four years so they should cherish the memory relationship with the teacher or institution throughout the life that should be memorable for student i want to make sure that this thing happens so for the cultural forefront of our college what do we think a cell should do for any cultural events so so uh, basically the question is what is your thought process for the cultural event and a cell should cell should follow that cultural event is one of the event where the engineering institution or engineering learning which has a limited teaching it will teach you only the technology but real use comes when the engineering cultural event happens in engineering college what is not thought in classroom is actually the team management team building working in teams discipline the conflict resolution among the team or within the team outside the team and and so these are all things are thought when you uh, are engaged in organizing some event maybe cultural or any other event the cultural participation in cultural event is one of the biggest stress relief and in indian tradition it has been thought as something like a medicine so the engineering college should encourage more and more not only technical events but also cultural events to be taken at a different role altogether few months back i met one of the student who was long back uh, passed out maybe around 20 20 25 years back and he was remembering that i was he was very weak in the studies but uh, when he came across the organization of uh, council and then he was a part of council and stage uh, he was anchoring and doing different things he gained the confidence and then the companies now look for such qualities it is not only about the working on the machine but they also like to have the this all qualities which i told recently and they encourage such people to bring in into the companies so this helps in not only overall development but opens a future opportunity doors that student can work on to it so as of now the podcast is going very amazing and we think uh, we with the interaction with our principal sir has to taken further so we are encouraging it for the part 2 thank you sir thank you very much it was a great talking to you
the Mahavir Education Trust has established the institution in 1985. 